What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Keenan Greenwood, Yo Dude 48, Josh Combs, Yeet, Nicholas A. Montgomery, Silent Valor, Brendan Wells, Silverstorm Forge, Big Geek, Damn Is It, Anthony Espino, Richard Black, Owen, Fordrin, Acolyte, Sammy Wilson, Jamie Irwin, Ollie 6006, Anthony the Hedgehog, Lee John Peter Owens, Kiki, Anthony, Nia, Antonio Joia, Graffiti Turtle, Ross Lingard, T Sunset, Wolbach DKs, Goddess Gaia, Grace Shields, Midnewit, Smooth Weaver, Robin Funkhauser, Geraldine Camoen, Purex Lancer, JT Campbell, Ethan Robinson, Desi Double Zero, The Whiskey Laddie, Austin Ramirez, Liam McCabe, King Mr. Mew, and I'd also like to give a shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, and Devin Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to support us on Patreon, click the link in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. That is not going to help them. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to... They took away this man's gun recently. <laughs> well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are y'all this evening? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully all of you are doing well. Uh, this is a bit of an odd one. Uh, <laughs> we've done the Glitter Bomb videos, or at least I, I have done all of them, and I think you've sat in on one of these, I believe. I think uh, I've seen the previous ones, either through reacting with you or by myself. Yeah. So, we're well aware of Mark Rober, and also Mark Rober is literally a, a genius. and is a Also, uh, Mark, congratulations on uh, the new Mars Rover, it landing safely, and it, uh, Sending back the first HD images of Mars ever. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, good job on that. And uh, honestly, I can't wait to see what that what that thing sends us back. But also, uh, Mark, uh, congratulations on being number one on trending yet again. And also, congrats on having more likes on your video, on this one video. This video has over 825,000 hours included. We just left a like on there. And uh, that is, I think, officially more than all the likes on all of our videos combined. Like, that's... Which, considering this is Mark Rober we're talking about, I mean, 17 million subs and also, like, genius inventor and has literally invented these glitter bomb traps, which, go figure. I would love I to... Maybe if we were NASA geniuses, we could... Like, come up with stuff to make our YouTube channel that successful, too. <laughs> oh, hey, who's to say I'm not a NASA genius? But just, yeah, I, so I'm not. You've already been hiding it from me. I'm not a NASA genius. No, I, no I don't, offense, man. <laughs> no, I, no, trust me. No, no offense taken. I, I am not an intelligent person when it comes to doing stuff like this. Like, when it, when it comes, I can build a computer. Like, I can build, like, like a basic baseline PC, which we fixed the washing machine the other day. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, calling somebody. Yeah, we uh, we I literally a took apart the. <laughs> yeah, there was a sock stuck in the water pump. So yeah. as soon as we got the sock out of there, we hooked it all back up, made sure everything was good, no leaks, no nothing like that, and we like that. Several loads of laundry since just fine. Yeah, no problems. So men, we are men. We fix shit. <laughs> Until we get angry and then we throw it out of protest and break it. That's kind of, that's kind of our niche, but Mark Rover has uh, teamed up. I, I've actually heard about this project previously. He's actually teamed up with several people and several organizations to actually work on this project. And uh, for anyone out there who gets random calls from random uh, numbers, for instance, today I have received nine. Spam calls. Is anybody with Nine. OCD really bothered by his hoodie strings, by the way? 
I didn't notice his strings were the strings on his hoodie were like that. Now I'm looking at it and I can't look away. Yeah. Well, I've been looking at the design on his hoodie. I'm like, that's a cool hoodie, but I've also been looking it's, at the strings and I'm just like, it's it's literally the uh, the glitter bomb that he has there. But uh, oh, fucking string. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it, Nick. OCD. So uh, I have received nine uh, today. I have received uh, two of them are the same number, and three. Uh, I have one. From Poland, New York, Wellman, Iowa. I have another one from Orange, California. And I have another one from Washington, D.C., Arlington, Tennessee. And where's the other one? Oh, yeah. Greensboro, North Carolina. Like, those are the ones that I've gotten from all over the place. And every single one of them is the exact same thing. It's like, hello. Are you upset with your current insurance? It's like... And, you know, you, you go and you press 2 to get them off your call list, but guess what? They keep calling back because apparently they don't get the memo. But anyway... That's why I like my Android. Because it just blocks those calls automatically. Mine, do, mine does most of the time, but at the same time, they keep getting new numbers. They keep getting new numbers to call me from. I mean, mine just blocks them without me even having to do anything. So. Good on you. I mean, if they get a new number, it just doesn't ever come through. Ugh... <sighs> Anyway. My phone honestly feels lonely because I don't even get calls from spam callers. <laughs> Shit. Nobody well, wants to talk to me. Well, every now and again, like, my phone blocks them, but every time they get a new number, it's just like, well, crap. I guess I need to block this one, too. So there you go. But we got this queued up here. Let's give this a watch. We're waiting for Jacob to get here. If he gets here, we'll bring him in and send him down. I mean... I guarantee he'll be interested in seeing what the hell this is all about because, you know, Jake's all about science stuff and he also, uh, he also is a big fan of, uh, like, NASA rocketry and, uh, if we tell him, hey, this guy's a NASA scientist, Jake will be like, uh huh. Yeah, so, we'll see. Anyway, let's get to it. You've probably have seen a lot of spam calls that sound something like this. Now, behind this harmless sounding call is a $20 billion scam industry. And today, we're going to roll $20 around billion. and see what crawls out. Because for the past five months, Damn. with the help of my trusty glitter bomb, which I typically just reserve for porch pirates, I've worked my way up every rung of the slimy chain of command involved in this scam. This journey is going to take us around the world and through five states. It involves Homeland Security, Samsung PIs, and of course, glitter bombs, and the scammers trying to hopelessly rid themselves of sparkly evidence. <laughs> Yes. So good one. Because it gets wild. Now this started for me when I was working on Glitter Bomb 3.0 this past November, and I kept getting those annoying calls. Yeah, this thing's calls. like. So I thought maybe to return the favor, I could send them like. Okay. He needs to market this as like a worldwide thing. Like he needs to make it so yes. that like regular people can buy a glitter bomb, and like whenever a scam caller calls him, he can be like, "Oh yeah, we'll send you the money. Give me an address." And just send your glitter bomb off to the scammer. And then, like, you know, uh, along with, like, a report to, like, whatever authorities are applicable and stuff, you know. So, they yeah. go fucking get them. And then, after a little bit, like, scammers will become too terrified to just keep scamming people. Exactly. And uh, also, a little bit of a soft flex here from Mark okay. Rober. And I kept getting this uh, annoying call. Look, all these unknown callers, Elon, potential spam, Jay-Z, right in the middle. A little bit of a soft flex there for Mark. time with Jay-Z. Exactly. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. <laughs> so I thought maybe to return the favor, I, I, I could send Part of me wonders heart. if he just did that just to when, when he showed his photo. That's what I'm thinking, too. Just like just like he changed whoever that was to Jay-Z. I would be surprised if it was Jay-Z. No, I wouldn't either. Time, I just wonder if it really no, was. I guarantee <laughs> you Jay-Z knows who this man is because of how popular he is on YouTube. I mean... Mm -hmm. Influencers on YouTube are getting bigger and bigger now. It's like Machine Gun Kelly collaborating with uh, Corpse Husband, and you know yeah. MGK wanting to get like some sort of whenever, cloud uh, off of that. Was it Drake that played with Ninja? Yeah, that's Fortnite? that's what blew him up. And that, yeah, yeah. like, I remember Dead Mouse playing with C Nanners like back in 2014, dude. That was epic. I was like, holy shit, dude! Nanners is playing with with Dead Mouse. That's awesome. This box that shoots out glitter and fart spray when you remove the lid. Now, my buddy Jim Bradley has a YouTube channel where he's able to reverse the connection I love this guy. computer and then thwart them in real time as they try and scan someone else. My idea was to have a legitimate victim agree to send the money. 
but then we work with them to actually send a glitter bomb instead. So Jim checked all the scammer computers he was currently monitoring, and it just so happened a woman named Tracy was being scammed for $12,500 at that very moment. So he immediately tried reaching out to her and eventually got through. $12,500. Hello, Tracy. Uh, this is Jim Browning here again. I'm calling you. Hopefully you've got my voicemail. Here's what happened. Now listen carefully to what Tracy is about to say here, and hold your judgment about how could anyone ever send $12,000 in the mail until I explain how the scam works in a minute. Because I hate to give these guys credit, but it's pretty clever. They were supposed to give me a refund of $300, and when I put it in the computer, I, I, I mistyped it as, as $13,000. So I had to send money back to them, $12,500, and that's where I am. Right. I'm hoping you haven't sent that money. I have sent it. Oh no, right. I hate to break this to you, but this whole thing is a scam. Well, what do I do now? Cause, cause the, the... I'll tell you what to do, Tracy. You leave this to me and Jim. The first yeah. thing we did was look at the address they told her to ship the money to, and given there were six cameras outside, this clearly was some kind of safe house for the scammers. We then had Tracy call FedEx to cancel the package, but just in case, we hired two PIs to be on the scene that day to intercept it. Ooh. I mean, we shouldn't do that right in front of the house because they'd probably be watching, but since we weren't sure which direction the FedEx truck would come from, we overnight shipped a package to a bunch of their neighbors that explained they were randomly selected to win one of these super cool glitter T-shirts. I want one. Buy one of these from MarkRover.com to help support making more videos like this. I'm certainly not gonna. Yeah, I want to go. This will allow us to later. speak to the. Me too. Me too. Because Mark is Mark is my fucking hero. You'll probably I see that us wearing them. Right now, anyways. You'll like, probably see yeah. us wearing them on here at one point. I have point. a couple of old T-shirts that are getting too old. So. <laughs> Delivery driver somewhere up the street to get the package stopped in time. And the plan worked flawlessly. Because despite Tracy's efforts to get it stopped, her package was in fact out on the truck for delivery. Tracy sent in, yeah, that's the one, don't deliver this one, please. Okay. This is the fraudulent one. If that one's gone, that's also going to send it again? Okay. But in a wild twist, there was a second package going to the same location addressed to the same fake name. Her name was Phyllis, and we later found out her package contained <laughs> even more cash than like Tracy's. That. Okay, so that one's going back, right? And then... <laughs> And FedEx was cool enough to eventually return the packages, so both Tracy and Phyllis got all their money back. Good job, yeah! Tracy back, Woo! asking why the package didn't arrive. She explained she accidentally selected two-day shipping instead of next-day air, so they would get the package tomorrow. And that's where we switched from defense to a very light offense. And so right. the next day, we deliver the package in an official-looking vest. Have a good holiday. Thank you. And waited for the sweet retribution. Hello. <laughs> Get shit on. Oh yeah, thirsty for more. Get shit on. Get shit on. <laughs> yes. Sorry, gonna explode next probably. Someone didn't immediately throw the box outside, and he just sat there with the wretched smell, leaving the box untouched. And then as we waited, wondering what his game plan was going to be, suddenly a bunch of NYPD officers started showing up, and it didn't take them long to figure things out. It's a glitter bomb, it has a camera built into it. There's a camera built into this. We had a phone number on the box, and they called us up, and I explained the whole situation, and I'll just say, there was some mutual admiration for each other's work. <laughs> I mean, there might be cameras on there, officer. And this is absolutely <laughs> to call the cops on himself. It's because he isn't a scammer. This is Gary. And it turns out, he's a super nice guy. But Gary runs an Airbnb. And once you go in that door, there are two rooms upstairs that he oh, runs out to people. Oh, no. Shit. Damn. So, this was an accident. Yeah. Damn, that sucks. But... Uh, maybe the guys who are the scammers are actually I feel bad right I now. feel bad now I feel bad now that I said get shit on but that I thought I didn't know like I guess that little context clue left out. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So this wasn't a safe house at all. These scammers would use Airbnb 
to get a temporary address they would only use once. But if that's true, that meant the scammers must have been there yesterday. So Gary showed us his security footage and we saw this woman in an orange jacket who appeared right as the PI was talking with the FedEx driver up the street. She also looks directly at the camera and then decides it's probably cold enough outside to zip her jacket all the way up. Once the FedEx truck passes and she realizes he skipped by her, she hurries over to talk to him and when he told her he had nothing for her for that day, she walks right back to her car, never stepping foot inside the Airbnb. The PI's got all the license plates on the street that day, and it turns out her name is Crystal. You should remember that name for later. So then Gary showed us who booked the room. It was this guy from Utah with a brand new account and zero reviews. In fact, when the reservation was booked, he sent this message in awkward English at 3.06 a.m., which happens to be just after lunch in India. So I did some more research and learned that after the scammer in India found a willing victim, they would use a money mule and have the victim send the cash there. So Crystal, in this case, was the mule. But instead of sending the package oh. to the money mule's house, they use an Airbnb. Then the mule gives the package to a supervisor who deposits the cash and, and wire transfers, transfers the remaining money back, back to the scammer. And the mostly got screwed because Crystal was long on the next day, which is when we, we caught poor Gary in the crossfire. But he wanted them to cut just as much as us, so we compensated him handsomely just for being cool about it. So we'll call that round a tie. We stopped the scammers from receiving two packages containing $30,000, but they were still glitter free. But before I show you exactly how we tip the scales in our favor, let me explain exactly how this scam works so well at tricking so many people. There's an email that goes along with the scam that basically says the same thing as the robocall, which is Amazon just charged you $200, but if you don't recognize this charge, please call right away and have it refunded. So when you call, they say, I'd be happy to walk you through the refund process on your computer. So just type this here and simply install this, yeah, and then that, I'll be able to fully... Anytime they ask you to install something on your desktop, that gives them control or gives them access to your like to anything to do with your computer no no i've no worked, i've worked for companies that handle money on pc multiple times same people that work for call centers you don't have to do anything no to refund if but, they have accidentally charged you something they already have everything they need to uncharge it yes At the most you'll get a message being like hey we accidentally charged you for this amount. We're really sorry. It is coming right back to your checking account. We apologize profusely. Yeah. Like if you want like a free like, discount on an order with us at some point, here's a coupon code. Bingo. Yeah. They're the not going to have you do anything to get that money back. So never fucking do anything they try to tell you to do. Yeah. And and me, I have, like I worked for AT&T. I worked for Sprint. I have been through it the ringer when it comes easy to, to reverse a charge. It is. Like, it, it is. I mean, just like that. Also, or... adding credit to a customer's account, like you said, if there's a mistake, mm -hmm. to give them a credit to credit them back. I mean, the max I was allowed to give at my level was like twenty five dollars. But for most people, that's fine. Most people also, they'll be happy with just five dollars. Anytime they say they've done something like this, the first person you should call. You shouldn't do anything that they say. The first person you should call should be your bank. Yes. Your bank can easily check to see if there is actually a hold on your account. And if there is not yet, they can keep a lookout in case one shows up. And mm -hmm. if there is, they will reverse it if it's an erroneous charge. Uh, so, like, yeah, don't fall for this. Please. Yeah, this stuff is just not good. I know it's easy to fall and for, but just... It is. You just keep that in mind. You should it, never have to do anything close to this to get a refund for... An, uh, erroneous charge. And also down here you notice that there's a little thing that is just like, hey, this pro this program is harmful to your computer. Yep. Keep or discard. Mm -hmm. Like, ne if any time that comes up from someone you're talking on the phone with, not good. No Most bueno. victims don't really comprehend they just installed a remote software program that gives the scammers full access to their computer. Now they're ready for the scam. They tell her that some accounts have actually already had their refunds automatically processed, so she needs to check her bank account to make sure the $200 Bingo. refund isn't already there. And when Betsy it. here asks if he can see her banking info, he explains in technical terms. It's a 3D page, so I cannot see anything. Oh, oh, okay. And so sure enough, she hasn't got the refund yet, so he needs just about five minutes to work with his billing department in order to process it. But first, he makes a really big deal about this. I'm signing out from your account. We're trying to have a balance of $78,000. And this is true. He actually does sign out. At which point he triggers her screen to go black so she can't see anything that he's doing. And then he immediately logs back in using the browser, pre-stored username and password. He's going to do a simple browser HTML edit on this page to temporarily and make this go. Lowe's purchase look like a refund for $20,000. And you'll see why in a minute. And as he's editing away, he chats her up to try and build trust. You're like my granny, Miss Bessie. Do you know this? Yeah. 
Jesus. she was like one of my closest oh. I used to share each and everything with her you mean like what you do for a living and you might be wondering why doesn't he just wire transfer himself money while he has unrestricted access to her account but the problem there is that it's traceable and it would likely get flagged by the bank's fraud detection system anyways but if you can get an old lady to mail you cash it's so untraceable the authorities don't even begin to try and track it down now that he's finished he unblinks her screen and he informs her that unfortunately the billing department couldn't process the refund, refund so, so they, they have, have one, one last, last option, option to try, try. This is the Chase Online Default Server. It's, it's actually, actually just a text, text window that does absolutely nothing. nothing. It's, it's pure theater. theater. It is an irreversible form. Whatever you are typing it over there, put it in a correct manner. Nothing would be changed over you. Basically it makes a big deal for three minutes that she's the one that has to enter all the information and anything that gets typed there is immediately permanent. Maybe you can see where this is headed. No. Show her name, last for social, zip code, and finally refund amount. Please enter your refund amount. If you go back, you can actually hear him type the two extra zeros on his keyboard and hit enter. Check everything, is it correct? Oh no, this is a mistake. Oh, I screwed up. I, oh, Jesus. I, it was supposed to be a, a oh, 200 in there. Oh, God almighty. I oh, my God, that I can't do this. My mind is Mom, absolutely please fried. Account. Please check your account. Did you really receive that money in your account? Oh my God. Plus 20,000. Yeah. Please save my job, ma'am. If I'll not earn for my family, my family will die due to hunger and uh, starvation. Yes, of course. Sweet I mean, piece of what shit. should I do? I mean, I can. Be bad for you. You are also like my grandmother. Oh my god. This, this is just. This makes me want to go to this call center and drop kick this asshole. This is an old woman, dude. This is a woman. Who is like, on, who's living on a fixed yeah, income? That's who they prey on, man. Yeah, it's they prey on the, the people that usually fall for these kind of things. Oh my god! You know, oh god, oh god. I'm sorry. This just, this just hurts me to my core. That's why I'm glad you know, Mark I'm has already got him back. Apparently, I'm, You're making me cry now. You're, I'm getting attached to you. Now how do I fix this? He tells her that unfortunately mailing a check or wiring money would just take too long, so he needs to think for a minute. And then he comes back with this. Hello, Miss Bessie? Yes. I got an option. And you can see now how he's got her to the point where she's totally willing to send $20,000 in the mail and to lie to the folks at the bank or FedEx or even her family who might try and stop it. In her mind, she messed up. And because she's a good, empathetic person, she'll, she'll go, go through, through great lengths to make it right, right for someone that she doesn't realize is a heartless scammer. And on top of weaponizing their empathy, maintaining pressure on their victim is a key tactic. They keep them on the phone the whole time, even as they drive to the bank, or they yell at them, go to the UPN. Why don't you go to the UPN? Or call this many times in a row. And if you've ever seen this clip, name a woman. Name a woman. Yeah. Um. You already know when you're under extreme stress, it's an actual biological response for the part of our brain that does critical thinking to just shut down. This is a part. Name a woman. Once they're back from the bank with the cash, they coach them through packing it. In Tracy's case, they had her put $100 bills in the pages of a book so it couldn't be detected in the mail. In other cases, they have the victims wrap the cash in saran wrap so the dogs can't snip it, and then foil so it can't be x-rayed. But unfortunately, there's a small portion of the population that are just too trusting for their own good. And sadly, it's nearly always older folks. So for the scammers, it's just a game of percentages to find them. According to data, Jim has gathered from the scammers' own computers in one shift, a call center like this with about 25 employees will send out a half a million robocalls, they'll get about 500 calls back, and land maybe 5 to 10 victims like Bessie or Tracy or Phyllis. And speaking of Phyllis, after we got FedEx to send back her package, I was able to get in touch with her son, and I found out her husband of 40 years had passed away the very week she was being scammed of her life savings. The scammers knew she was mourning this loss, but once you're scammed, your phone number is really valuable because it means you're an easy mark. So they sold her info to other scammers, and she was scammed twice more the same week her husband died. And as hard as it was for me to even hear a backstory like that, it just made me that much more motivated to seek some glitter bomb retribution for all the Phyllis's out there 
and perhaps in the process, we might stumble upon some good information that we could pass on to the authorities. So now we needed another scammer to send a glitter bomb to, but we decided when Jim spots a scam in progress, it's better for him just to stop it cold and not stress out the victim any more than they already are. So we reached out to our friend Pierogi from the YouTube channel Scammer Payback, because whenever Pierogi uh. gets a scam call to his actual phone, he turns on his cameras, makes his voice sound like an old lady, and has some fun. Yeah. <laughs> in your bank, like why you are withdrawing that this much of cash, what you gonna tell them? Um, I'm getting it for Derek Wilson from Microsoft. No, no, <laughs> no. You need to tell them that you are withdrawing the cash for your personal reason. For your personal reason. And it didn't take long for fake victim Old Woman Progi to get us an address in New Jersey. Is this where I'm sending it to? Right. Grab a box, right? So you can put the cash. Yeah, I've already got a box. I already got a box that's big enough. This one was actually to a hotel and not an Airbnb. But as soon as we pulled up, once again, a money mule is out there waiting for us. Look what we found here. So they took the package and drove around for a couple of hours, and when it was clear they weren't going to open it, we made the call just to get the box back before the batteries died, and then maybe the box audio recording might help us piece together more info on the scam. You guys picked up a box from FedEx today, part of the scam? I didn't have no scam going on today. Oh, really? No. Let's see the box. I just was told I understand. by somebody to pick this up for them. I understand. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, I'm being honestly and truthfully, and I don't want no trouble. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh, well, now I feel bad. Sometimes these mules don't even realize they're participating in scams, and they might even be victims themselves. So then I was like, look, not that I don't believe her, but maybe just in case, we just have a little peek at the audio. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Then she got on the phone with her boss, James. Yeah, I know, I got one with me right now. I took the picture, I took the picture. I'm going to run it to you. That's what I'm saying. You said that I was going to put it in. Where I got to be at tomorrow? You said that we was working out here in New Jersey. I don't know where they give me an address that they don't even have to be in the address. It's a weapon for tomorrow. This is the first time they split me and Crystal up like this in the Aha! Crystal. Right. Crystal. Apparently they're a team, which means Jacqueline was probably in the car the other day in New York. Any other time she in the car watching me. By the way, Crystal, hate to say it, but Jacqueline was talking a lot of trash about you. In fact, <laughs> I'd watch your back, because her cousin in the car that day might be gunning for your job. I'm gonna be a driver. How much you think you pay? How much you get for that one bar? So we get seven parcels, and it's $75 or $100 for each parcel. Everybody's getting $700. You're gonna be back in Fuki Road Beach, Ethan, Silver, Delaware, and Mary. You're gonna be in there, 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 there. You're gonna be looking like you're on vacation, have the time of your life. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, and I'm being honest and truthful. We learned uh -huh. two key things here. Uh -huh. The first is that a supervisor will have uh -huh. multiple mules reporting to them, who apparently get flown all over the country, and just one mule could receive as many as seven packages in a day. And the second is that this address was from a totally different call center in India. So that same supervisor can work with multiple unrelated scammers as well. And so in the spirit of avenging Phyllis, if we were gonna glitter bomb and fart spray anyone here in the States, we really wanted it to be a supervisor. And thanks to Pierogi, mm -hmm. not long after, we would get another chance. Uh, get the $50,000 in cash with you. Get in your car, once you're in your car, let me know. Make sure you don't want any third person, nobody. So I don't need to tell my husband. Your husband, your father, anyone. This one would be in Illinois. And the delivery address this time was to a Walgreens. It was interesting to see them experimenting with Walgreens. different package drop-off methods. And right away, we heard some good news. The Walgreens was here, and the handoff occurred here at this gas station. And with that, we had our supervisor. They tell the supervisor for a few minutes and yes. got a good look at his 2019 white Honda Passport. And then 20 minutes later, he stopped here in a seemingly random parking lot and opened it. Oh. And even though he kept it by his feet, the camera's got a perfect shot of his face here. And the PIs assessed gotcha. the situation and felt safe enough to approach him right after he opened it, but then he took off. And they let him go, and we just used the GPS and the glitter bombs to once again locate it in the ditch snow. 
And right after that, Progi got this message from the scammer in India, which shows two things. The supervisor and scammer are in close contact with each other, and neither one likes Glitter. And that seemed like the end of the story, until we ran the plates and realized his name was tied to a business really close to where he opened the box. So we went back a week later to get footage to show just how close. Here's where he opened it. You can see that dumpster and house for reference. And then you pan over, and that's the business his name is tied to. And wait a second, oh. that's a 2019 Honda Passport. And wait Ooh. another second, that's the wait. same guy whose face is on camera opening the glitter bomb. So this was a nice little package of intel we were able to hand off to the authorities because the supervisor is sort of the hub and a direct connection between a bunch of mules in the states and a bunch of scammers in India. Perugi came through with one final address in Texas and this one was back Texas. to the MO of being delivered to an Airbnb. And like all the others, the mule's right there waiting for us and then she took it inside to open it. Oh. <laughs> Notice how she films herself opening the package. Apparently this is pretty common because I suppose there's no honor among thieves and the scammers will demand the video to confirm she hasn't taken more than she's allowed. As we learned before, the money mules make a flat amount per package, like a hundred bucks. But I ended up reading somewhere that the supervisor gets a 10% cut and sends the rest back to the scammers. This lady later admitted she herself was exchanging the cash for a bitcoin to send back to the scammers, which meant she was actually a supervisor and for the sake of Phyllis, that was a lovely surprise. She took off and parked about a mile away, but the police were alerted and were on her tail pretty quickly. I love that attempt at just getting away with the parking warning. So she gets out of the car, and I have to applaud the effort here, but as every parent knows, the only way she's getting rid of the evidence from her pants and car is by burning them both to the ground. Yes. I don't know. And so after she was taken into custody, the police returned to the Airbnb to gather evidence. The dude on the left there is a detective, and they already had her under investigation for another package scam. So now they're bringing charges against her, and the actual glitter bomb and footage is being held as evidence in the case. We did one more in Illinois and two more in California, but I decided against oh. showing those because those scammers are being monitored as part of ongoing investigations. In fact, Ooh. over the past four months, Jim, Pierogi, and I have been in contact with investigators from the respective local police departments, the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, and the FBI, and we've turned over to them every last bit of evidence we've stumbled upon. So hopefully, like me, you now have a better understanding of how these scam calls operate, and here's why that matters. The authorities are cracking down more on these guys, both here in the States and in India. Good. But it's sort of a game of whack-a-mole, and another one will just pop up because the financial incentives are so great. The only way to truly defeat this is by spreading awareness, thereby making it ineffective. So if you have someone in your life who's older that means a lot to you, please educate them or even share this video with them. I put the resources in the video description if you've been exposed to fraud, but all the experts agree it's much better to not be reactive here, but proactive by spreading awareness and understanding what this looks like. And speaking of being proactive, I will close with some good news, which is that thanks to Jim, who explains how he did it in a video he just released on his channel, we have the identifying information of the folks over in India who scammed our girl Phyllis. And by the way, everyone in India hates these guys too. And so over the next year, of course, working with the proper authorities, we'll be executing a multi-phase operation that will be, as always, relatively harmless. And I don't want to give too much away, but we already have some informants working for us in some of these call centers, and the first Ooh. phase might include a door handle and actual poop from Phil's actual <laughs> Oh, dog. come in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> yeah, we're just finishing up this video. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Mark Rober, you remember him? Uh, my coat out the way. Yeah, Mark Rober. Uh, he is a NASA. He is a scientist who's like worked on the Mars rovers that NASA sent up, and uh, he owns a YouTube channel where he basically makes glitter bombs to catch scammers and uh, people who are porch pirates. And steal like Amazon stuff and everything. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. When they take the bomb to open up and just douse them. Yeah, yeah, it's friggin' awesome. This is a, a the I like I said we're just about to finish up. Uh, they caught several like scammers and like supervisors and everything, and it's uh, this is like him.
closing out by saying the best thing to do is be proactive. And uh, So make sure you're subscribed, because it's going to be a banger. Oh, well, that's it. Okay, so... Oh, wait, is there more? You can talk to plants on this box, and it has some electronics inside to measure the soil moisture level, and then talk to you when you walk by. I need a little water over here. That's delicious. Thank you. And this machine measures how long it's been since you've stood up and employs the kid sitting behind you on a long flight method to encourage a stretch break. This is a game to motivate exercise during a lockdown, and this is a secret safe for your most valuable possessions. Oh, and wow. finally, this is a G-Dang Lunchables assembly line. Are you kidding me? And what do all of those have in common? They were created by people who took my month-long creative engineering course. I just launched this class for the first time a few months ago. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Mark Rover, ladies and gentlemen. Mark friggin' Rover. What can you say, man? Dude's a genius. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy that they were able to catch, like, because, Jake, people were getting scammed for, like, $30,000, $12,000, and it's basically old ladies who don't know any better, mm -hmm. and literally they're just getting, like, scammed out of their fucking gourd, and... Mark and these uh, guys who have, like are experts on dealing with scammers uh, are basically just like towing, like just like putting their foot down, saying "fuck this," no, we're not letting this happen, and that's and that's that. And honestly, big fucking applause to this guy. He he deserves like he deserves all the credit in the world and all the love in the world. So I'm gonna buy one of his shirts because I like that epic design of the glitter bomb that he has on there. But I guess, uh, well, for, for this one, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end this one here. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully we'll see you all in the next one. So until then, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And, uh, I'm Jack. <laughs> we'll see you later, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>